Medzitrizin ka mo? Isa ka stab nga ba yun, Jessie? Immune Pro. Grace Pharmacy. Madasig, kompleto, barato, kaglimpyo. Ardy Ong's line of products. Making your vehicle tough for roads less traveled. Stocking water is a must. Tanke is here. Locally produced. International quality. Tanke. Dow imported. Chef, uh, first of all, thank you for the time and happy birthday. Thank you so much for making time also <laughs> and your interest in my work. Thank of course, you. of course. I am a fan. <laughs> Thank you. Chef, uh, uh, I've read that you are an advocate of staying positive. Uh, of course, yeah. It's been like two years and I guess this is your first branch to be open after the pandemic. Yes, started. actually, yeah. And it was also um, the only one that we were building through the pandemic. Um, oh. We had to stop uh, construction for about um, almost a year. Um, it was already 20, 30 percent built up. And um, we, of course, were a little bit wary that maybe, um, you know, uh, the, we didn't know when the pandemic was going to end. But um, it was actually as late as December last year. When I came back to Bacolod and I said, well, you know, it, it feels like we can do it now. Mm -hmm. So we actually were a little worried for almost two years. But um, I don't know why, it just felt right in December. And we decided to pursue it and finish it. It took only two months. Um, by the end of February, actually the store uh, was already 95% ready to open. Then just um, another three weeks of testing and working with the staff and getting them trained and uh, bringing also our key people from Manila to be able to um, do the training and, and hasten the process. Um, th this is also a very unique store because in Manila we have 16 stores and we work out of a commissary. So all the uh, mother sauces are produced daily in a commissary and delivered to the stores. But this is the first one where um, almost um, actually all the cooking is just done in this kitchen. So it's also a unique, um, a unique store. It's a learning experience for us. And of course, the first one outside Manila. So we feel we're very happy and um, the team is, is um, really... Um, Fulfill, feeling a lot of fulfillment that we were able to to do it, um, you know, uh, with with uh, new, different challenges, no, to get the store open. But is this uh, beyond being the first to open outside Manila? Is this also symbolic in a way? Of course, it is. Actually, it's it's somewhat like a homecoming for me. Um, my maternal grandparents are from Bago. Oh. Actually, my Lolo is from Bago and my grandmother is from Valladolid. So, um, it, it, um, the choice to do it here in Negros, our first um, out of Manila branch, um, is, is quite symbolic. For me, it's giving back um, to my heritage and to you know, my, my family's roots also. And I think that it's also giving back to the province 
um, where I where I came from and and where I spent many of my summers as a child and um, I'm very very um, proud of my my uh, my Negrense heritage and I also feel that it's a great opportunity to showcase some of the produce and the ingredients um, uh, produced by our Negrense farmers and uh, Negrense um, artisans and purveyors. So um, it's, uh, it's, it's really kind of like coming full circle for me. Uh, what attracted you to Italian cuisine? Oh, that's a long story. Actually, um, I always say that I may have been Italian in my past life, oh. um, but I, it's, it all started uh, during my uh, teenage years in New York. Um, when our family was there in self-exile. Um, it was a time when a lot of um, Italian people from, from the mainland of Italy were moving to New York for greener pastures. So the, they were opening a lot of um, more authentic uh, and, and northern Italian um, concepts. And I fell in love with that. Um, aside from that, I also worked with an Italian company a very very strong brand uh, the fashion house Valentino oh. so I also learned um, what it meant to to have like um, you know to be part of a, a a strong iconic Italian brand and I think that the learning of that um, uh, looking fast forward to today I find that it helped me also um, understand how to create a strong brand um, uh, in, in, in whatever I was uh, pursuing and um, during that time I, I was starting to dabble and cooking for my friends making a lot of pasta that was really how I started and um, when my grandfather passed away in 1985 our whole family kind of moved back to Manila and a few months after the revolution happened and uh, so in 1986 I still felt that yearning to you know to pursue um, learning how to to create really authentic Italian food so that's when I decided to ask my mom if I could go to Italy and learn and you did. yeah and I did uh, in September of 1986 and it was a very short stay it was just four months but I almost felt like a homing pigeon it just felt so natural and I learned so fast I took lessons from three Italian signoras just out of their homes. So it wasn't like an institutional cooking school setup. It was really more learning from Italian mothers. Mm -hmm. And I think that maybe that was a blessing. I think that God kind of led me through that path because I think that um, the heart and soul of Italian cuisine is really um, home style cooking. Yes. So um, I learned not just about the, the, the way to cook it, but I think more importantly, I learned about um, the respect for, for ingredients that the Italian people have. That's kind of like their soft power. Uh, it's all about the beautiful tomatoes, the beautiful olive oil, the beautiful cheese. And kind of that, that learning and that awareness is what I took back to Manila when I came home. So apart from preparing Italian food for the Filipino market. I just started cooking in people's houses, actually. It took me um, a few years, and then I started to, to do um, a catering business. Uh -huh. I grew it from something very small, and um, it took me about 10 years um, to decide to open my first restaurant. So Chibo started in 1997, mm -hmm. but I think through that, um, that, that uh, journey and that path that I took, they, then I learned also um, a real kind of uh, awareness of Filipino produce and Filipino ingredients because in search of a good tomato, I mean, I, I started to go around, um, you know, looking around for something that I could use to make Italian food. And I learned how different our, our Filipino tomatoes are. We use it to sour things, mm. right? It's very different from the Italian tomato. And then I also started to discover other things like working with Ubud, Palm Heart, because in, in Italy they used it for salads, but they would use it out of a can. Oh. So there was that appreciation of my God. The Philippines has really beautiful ingredients um, that um, is unique to our country. So, so uh, that, that whole awareness also made me understand our cuisine 
Um, and uh, eventually, I started to do um, my own take on Filipino dishes. Um, authentic, like, let's say, the adobo. Um, I, I learned how to, how to make it, but I also learned how to tweak it and use, let's say, Italian vinegar instead mm. of tuba vinegar, just to, to have a different take and to do um, something that uh, was my expression of merging, let's say, um, it Italian um, mother, mother cuisine with something Filipino. Because I always say that um, my goal was really to showcase um, the best of the Philippines uh, together with the best of the world. It, it was that kind of... Um, of uh, love also for my own, for our own cooking and our own ingredients that, um, that kind of evolved through my journey. So via Italy, I also rediscovered and, and um, learned a lot about our own cuisine and that's why I create both. I don't know what's the love affair of the Italians with tomato because I've heard Michael Carello saying that uh, uh, a lot of ingredients play a secondary role to tomato, a secondo, as he, might, as he would call it. Uh, what's the love affair with tomatoes? Well, you know, the tomato came to Italy via Mexico through, oh, oh, you know, oh. the, during the, the travels of, uh, of the, the uh, Spanish conquistadors, just the same way that, um, you know, there was a lot of influence from Mexico and Spain also in, in, our, in our own cooking as well as our ingredients, no? Um, but, well, I think that maybe there's something about uh, the terroir of Italy where the, the, the tomato grew differently, no? There's, uh, there's, it's quite incomparable um, with other tomatoes in, in other parts of the world, but the southern Italian tomato is really quite iconic mm -hmm. so they use it mostly um, actually um, in the lower part of Italy from Rome downwards because that's where it grows nicely as opposed to the north of Italy where they use more butter and and cheese mm -hmm. um, the, the the Italian tomato really kind of like um, is celebrated in the in the southern part well, uh, I don't know if there's a similarity between uh, Italian cuisine and Filipino cuisine because the closest we can get to Italian cuisine actually in the Philippines is, of course, the spaghetti. Yeah. Although it's, it's actually not al dente, the pasta is not al dente, it's kind of mushy. Well, I, I think that our, um, our uh, love for spaghetti here actually came from you know the 45 years under American rule, American rule. and that's why we put hot dogs in our spaghetti and, and banana ketchup. and at the same time um, our uh, flavor profile in Filipino cooking sweet. there's a lot of sweetness apart from the sourness so that's why that was that's actually our initial appreciation of spaghetti so when um, Chibo started in 1997 I was very very particular quite adamant actually and um, determined to really pr uh, present to the Filipino market the authentic Italian um, way of cooking pasta and making spaghetti. So I, I made sure it was al dente. Some people were uh, taken aback because they said it was hindi luto. Hilaw. It hilaw. was hilaw. <laughs> and then at the same time, they were saying, why is your um, spaghetti bolognese sauce sour. I said, well, you know, it's not supposed to be sweet. In mm. Italy, they never put sugar in it. Mm. Um, the sweetness only comes from the tomato. So um, I, I, I'm glad that I was um, very, very particular about it at the start because I think that um, it made the Filipino market actually appreciate um, authentic Italian cooking. And um, 25 years after we're celebrating our 25th anniversary in August, mm. I'm 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 glad that I, I put my foot down and I really um, stuck my stuck to to um, to my decision to really um, make sure that I brought out the authenticity of the cuisine because I guess proof of the pudding is that the Filipino market loves authentic Italian cooking now. But do you think you're part of that education, educating the Filipino palate? Well, I, I, I'd, I'd like to think so, um, that um, uh, in all humility, I'm, 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 I, I'd like to think that maybe um, 
I did help um, the, the, the Philippine market um, um, develop their appreciation for, for authentic Italian cooking. And um, today, you know, I, I used to be very strict actually in the beginning where I, I didn't allow like interchanging ingredients um, that were not meant to be uh, eaten together the way the Italians do. But today, I, you know, 25 years after, People are now well-traveled, they go to Italy a lot. So I think that um, it, it's, it's okay now to, to just, um, you know, let, let people have, have their, their way of, let's say, changing a pasta shape with the Penel Telefono. They want it with spaghetti, we, we say yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that it's, uh, it's made people really fall in love with the brand. And um, the proof of the pudding is, being able to actually open here in Bacolod because um, it took me a while to really decide to do it but um, now I realize maybe it was also um, a blessing that came out of the pandemic that people were not traveling to Manila as much oh. anymore from Bacolod so they're very very happy this is the feedback that I've been getting the last two weeks since we opened that gosh I don't have to go to Manila anymore mm. to get my spinach dip mm. so we were very very happy that we've been able to bring the brand here to Bacolod and here too at, um, at Anayala Mall because that's where I started the first um, branch of Chibo 25 years ago. By the way, uh, I, it just occurred to me, uh, Chibog is the slang for eating. That's one of the reasons why I, I, I chose uh, Chibo to, uh, as the name of the restaurant. Is that a derivative of the Italian word? I think so. I think that maybe it could have been um, because Chibo means food. It means sustenance. Mm. And I don't know if, if it's just a coincidence, but maybe... Um, I don't know if maybe some Filipinos who lived in Italy probably <laughs> coined the, the slang word for it. Mm. Um, but uh, that was one of the reasons why I chose the word Chibo as well. I had some Italian friends who said, why would you name a restaurant Chibo? This is 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, I noticed that there are restaurants now even in Italy called Chibo oh. and um, in California also and other parts of the world. So. I'd like to, to think that we set the trend 20, that started 25 years ago. Yes. Chef, uh, Italian cooking emphasizes on the use of fresh herbs and spices and fresh ingredients. But, you know, uh, now Filipino cooking, we use a lot of MSG. Oh, yeah. Vaccine. Well, that's kind of banned in my kitchen. <laughs> in any of my kitchens, actually, not just Chibo. But what do you think of that? Uh, what's wrong with Vaccine? Well, some people say that it's unhealthy, but then there are other Asian cuisines that are proud to use it. So I think it's, you know, kind of uh, just preference. But um, I think that in, 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 um, in many of the, the, the restaurant uh, brands that I, that I started, as well as in my catering business, we try to create the umami um, from other things. Like in Italy, um, uh, some people may not know this, but the rind or the skin of the of the Parmigiano cheese mm -hmm. is actually not thrown away because it's used to add umami to oh, add flavor yes. to a dish. So they put the, the the skin of the of the of the of the Parmigiano inside. Let's say when they when they make a soup, they add flavor that way. Or when they make risotto, they put the the leftover skin after grating all the cheese they leave it in the risotto as they as they stir so that it adds flavor so you don't really need to resort to to msg there are other ways to create it you can use um, reduced vegetable broth because that's the base actually of uh, of um, of using the the seasoning no uh, the cubes that add flavor are actually um, made from a reduction of vegetables yes. so it's uh you can do it th that way so we always make our broth so much more flavorful by using the the trimmings of the vegetables mm -hmm. to create flavor what do you think is the future of filipino cuisine oh I, I think that it has such a bright future i think that the last 10 years have been a real renaissance for our cuisine um, there's a, a, a new kind of global awareness um, of how unique our cuisine is. Um, many people 
we're saying, why did it take so long for people to appreciate Filipino cuisine? Other Asian cuisines got there ahead of us, Vietnamese, Thai, etc. Mm -hmm. But I think that, you know, um, the journey of, of uh, what, what Filipino cuisine went through is also partly um, because of our history. We're a very young country and um, there was a time when we all loved everything imported before we loved our own cooking. And um, I'd like to think that, you know, this last 10 years, I'm very proud that I've been part of the movement, um, that, you know, the Filipino chefs and uh, Filipino food lovers have gone through to really kind of like um, go out there and, and bring our cuisine to the global stage. A lot of things have happened. Um, uh, the, in the last 10 years, um, things that, you know, that took people like Tita Glenda Barreto, who started way, way ahead of all of us, um, uh, Tita Nora Daza, those were the, the, the people that really started this, this whole kind of, um, um, this whole journey of bringing our cuisine out there. But it took a while, it took um, some of us younger chefs, you know, to really kind of um, stick to our guns and get it out there. Um, there were uh, different events like um, the slow food movement, which is very strong here in Negros. Um, that whole Majid Fusion project that was started by um, by the Department of Tourism during the time of President Aquino. Those things, I mean, brought us closer, you know, to where Philippine cuisine is today. Secretary Berna Puyat, when she was working with the Department of Agriculture, was also quite instrumental in rounding up us chefs to be proud of our, our, our of, of Filipino produce and Filipino ingredients, as well as Filipino cuisine. So all of that added, even if um, for a while, you know, uh, we Filipinos didn't really, uh, we were not proud of our, our cuisine, but it took, it took this, the, all these steps for us to have this new love affair with our own. Um, and, you know, it, 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 it's, it, it doesn't matter whether it only started 10 years ago, but where it is today, this newfound love for our own, and most especially with the young chefs, no? Um, not uh, young chefs all over the Philippines, and most especially as well here in Negros, as well as young chefs outside the Philippines who are Filipino or doing Filipino food. Filam, Filam chefs, um, the young chefs in Europe who are in, in, uh, in kitchens all over the world, or even Filipino chefs who are on cruise ships. They're all very proud and they're, they're real um, ambassadors of bringing our our cuisine out there to the and, and really making people um, all over the world fall in love with the uniqueness of, of our, our cuisine. Finally, Chef, I know you're very busy in the kitchen. Uh, yes. What did you learn from the pandemic? Oh, from the pandemic, I think I learned that, you know, there's always, um, you know, a silver lining that comes out of every crisis and every challenge. Um, we've been able to develop new income streams because of this. Um, our, our, our own service staff became part of a delivery brigade during the time that we couldn't do dine-in instead of um, just relying on third-party um, delivery companies. We developed our own. So we have a, a whole team that we call the Chiba Rapido Riders. Um, aside from that, um, food kits, you know, um, we've been able to develop that also, um, not just at Chibo, but in all our brands. Um, at the same time, we also diversified and went into frozen frozen pizza and bottling our iced tea. And soon we'll, we're going to start to um, develop a line also of um, packaged and bottled things that will be in supermarkets. We already have our frozen pizza in, in various um, supermarket um, uh, uh, brands in Manila, even 7-Elevens. Oh. So we've brought our brand actually closer to people's homes. Um, and I think that that's um, a, real, a real gift that came out of the pandemic. And I think um, more importantly, it's also um, learning how 
incredible our team is, our staff is, because through the crisis, they never let us down. Um, we became a closer family and um, we helped each other go through the crisis. And after, after that happened, um, we now realize that, you know, um, as a business, you can go through so many challenges, but as long as you um, decide to stay united, um, we didn't let anybody go through through the through the whole um, nearly two year period of the crisis, and now we're very happy that we've been able to maintain our staff, and now we know that throw anything our way, we're going to be able to make lemonade out of lemons, <laughs> and uh, it, it's just. Um, allowed me to really um, appreciate also the entire business that I've built the last 35 years and appreciate the people that are part of, of this journey of mine. Chef Gaita, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Damugin nga salamat. Thank you so much. Scary creatures in your house? Call ISK Tech Pest Management Services. They know what to do. Nature's Perfect Lunchbox. For perfect eggs, fresh and clean, guaranteed all the time. For orders, text or call 0907-838-7958. Do your chair. Don't throw garbage anywhere. A reminder from LR Cares. You've tasted empanaditas and buns, but have you ever tasted papas con chorizo, curried chicken, pulled pork, double cheese, and tuna basil? Only Jinkis Kitchen offers these flavors. Catch a bite now of Jinkis Kitchen, empanaditas, and buns at Kmart, Monster Epic at Singkang, and Talisay City, San Carlos, Silay City, Lopez East Center, and Lopez San Sebastian. Jinkis Kitchen, empanaditas, and buns, a pocket full of goodness. Cecilia's Negrense Delicacies, freshly baked happiness with every bite.